jacket. <laughs> it's kind of warm. That's it. Anyway, uh, I hope you're doing well and I'm um, happy and delighted to see uh, Brother Philip and Sister Marilyn with us this morning. And I'm sorry you had poison ivy. Um, I don't know what that is, but anyway. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, <laughs> sounds poisonous. And so, <laughs> for the next 15 minutes, uh, bear with me. Uh, God is indeed a wonderful uh, creator, um, and he has, I don't know about you, but he has given me calmness in the midst of storm. He has assured me of his blessings, and understand that our physical existence and uh, uh, the way how we think about physical things um, should not trump our spiritual experience. And I hope that you are having a spiritual ex experience. If you are not, if you're living in this body and you're not having a spiritual experience, then you must um, seek God um, directives. And there are some spiritual um, experiences when you receive Christ, and one of those is to be a part of God's kingdom. <coughs> Turn with me to um, uh, Colossians, the chapter is 1, Colossians chapter 1, and um, verse 13 through to verse 15. You have got Philippians and then Colossians. Colossians 1. A matter of fact, um, let me start from verse 12. And give thanks to the Father who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light. He has delivered us from the power of darkness and translated us into the kingdom of the Son of His love, in whom we have redemption through the blood, the forgiveness of sins. He is the image of the invisible God, the first born over all creation. This morning I am going to be talking about Jesus is Jesus ushering the kingdom of God. Understand that the kingdom of God is here with us. Um, what happened during the time of Jesus' ministry and what he did during his earthly ministry is a profound uh, intention and action and each carrying immense importance uh, about the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God isn't a distant concept but a present reality. Jesus inaugurated this kingdom during his, during his earthly present ministry. It's crucial to understand that this kingdom isn't merely a future heavenly realm, but also a current manifestation of God's reign and rule over creation. As Jesus declared the kingdom is in the midst of you in Luke chapter uh, 17 and verse 21. His ministry showcased aspects of this kingdom, such as preaching, healing, disciple making, and restoration. Mark 1 36, Matthew chapter 4 23, Mark 3 13. The full realization of the kingdom awaits the eradication of sin to be unveiled in the new heavens and a new earth. Understand that the kingdom of God 
is here when Jesus was being tried, uh, set up by the Jews and the scribes and the Pharisees so that he could be killed. Uh, he was in the midst of Pilate and the Romans, the Romans being the one who ruled over the provinces of the different areas during that dispensation. And, and, and Jesus said, my kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom, I think in John chapter 18, if you want to write that scripture down, from verse 30 through to 36, if my kingdom was of this world, then my subject would have taken up arms and they would have fought. Jesus bore witness to the truth. Central to Jesus' earthly mission was bearing witness to the truth. He explicitly stated, for this purpose I was born, and for this purpose I have come into the world, to bear witness to the truth. John 18, 37. His entire life and ministry were dedicated to revealing the truth about God himself and the scriptures by preaching, teaching, and demonstrating the truth. Jesus uh, um, unveils the hearts of those who had been waiting for the Messiah. And so I would like you to understand that we who are free from sin need to give God thanks in all circumstances. We need to understand that we need uh, 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 to give God thanks when we have plenty and when we do not have enough. When we are going through struggles, the Bible tells us, according to uh, 1 Peter, that we are sharing in God's uh, tribulation. 1 Peter chapter 5. You have read that chapter. 1 Peter chapter 5 from 1 through to 12 and 16. It says, um, all that we are going through, Jesus Christ went through it. And we are sharing in his trials. We are sharing in his tribulation. We are sharing. And so we must give God thanks when we go through hardship. We must give God thanks when we go through trials because God is perfecting our faith. God is molding and shaping our lives for something bigger and better. And so uh, whenever those who are in athletics and they are clearing um, hurdles there, they set up some hurdles along the track and they must clear these hurdles. And all of these hurdles, when you go over the first one, it's sort of easy. You know, that's the first one. The second one, oh, it's putting a little strain on the muscles, but no, no problem. And the third one, yeah, I got this, um, you know. But when you reach to the, the, the fourth, the fifth, the sixth one, you, you, you start to feel a burning sensation. You're grasping for here. Your, 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 your adrenaline is moving. Um, um, your your, your, your um, short-term muscles um, 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 becomes fatigue. And, and you're, 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 you're digging deep, but you said you can make it. And you feel like you're slowing down, but you are going to um, um, triumph over these hurdles. And so you go through this to what you call presentation and practice and then... Um, um, production, production, um, 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 practice, and then presentation. And, and, and so you have to practice to practice and develop uh, uh, muscles so you'll be able to go faster and faster and clear all those hurdles that are before you. The trials of life is the same thing. The kingdom which we are in, God has put us in so that he can shape and mold our lives and perfect our faith. So understand that you need, you and I need to rejoice. And I pause deliberately there. We need to rejoice when we face diverse trials. What is God has intended for you? How do we structure going forward? What is my personal contribution to God's kingdom as an individual? The commitments that God has left in his kingdom 
for you and I to do. How can I carry out this and be effective and efficient in such a diverse, um, 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 traumatic um, uh, um, uh, climate with the raging storms and the trials and what we are going through? These are questions that only can be answered in the scriptures. Understand that Jesus came to seek and to save the lost. An aspect of Jesus' ministry was his mission to seek and save the lost. Luke 19 and verse 10. True is compassionate outreach to the marginalized and his, and his sacrificial atonement. Jesus demonstrates his heart for humanity. Redemption. While salvation is initiated by the Father's choosing, Jesus' atoning work on the cross made redemption possible for all who would believe in him. His ministry exemplifying God's relentless pursuit of reconciliation with his creation. Bind back his um, creation. So, so, so when you hear the word atonement, it's in Leviticus chapter 16 where you will see this. The atonement, it, you break it up in uh, a syllables, at one, we call it at one man, being in, in harmony with God. So, so if you read, there was a piece of furniture, I think it's Leviticus chapter 13, there was a piece of furniture that was on the ark. And every year they will offer turtle doves and, and bulls and goats to appease their sin or to be back in harmony with whom? With God. Jesus Christ has now become this propitiation. He has become this propitiation. If you read Romans chapter 8, he has become this propitiation where we don't have to offer bulls and, 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 and turtle doves and will because Jesus Christ died once and for all. Brought us back. Jesus brought restoration to us via the kingdom of God. The brokenness caused by sin permeates every facet of creation. Jesus came to restore what was broken, initiating a process that will culminate in the complete restoration of all things upon his return. His humble entry into the world and his ministry of reconciliation foreshadow the ultimate restoration that awaits when Christ returns. He will usher in a new era where sin and its effects are eradicated mm -hmm. and God's original plan for creation is fully realized. In essence, Jesus' earthly ministry <clears throat> and, and redemption and restoration is seen by all men. If you and I weren't privy, if you and I weren't exposed to what the gospel is, the kingdom of God. Think about where you and I would be today. I know I would not be standing here speaking to you. I'd either be dead in prison or doing something foolish. It's a fact. God has brought us back into our harmony with him. Jesus ushered the kingdom of God. Imagine walking along the shores of Galilee Witnessing the miracles, catch of fish, as Jesus called his first disciple in Luke 5 and verse 1 to 11. This event recorded in Parliament in Matthew chapter 4, verse, 8 through to, verse 18 through to 22, and Mark 1, chapter 1, 16 through to 20, symbolizing the inauguration of the kingdom of God. Jesus transformed, transformed us uh, 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 when he show the miracles of a fishing expedition into a divine encounter, revealing his authority over creation and inviting his people into a new reality where they become fishers of men. So when Jesus, you know, you remember the, 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 when Jesus said, um, what happened? You guys not catching any fish? I said, no, we have been toiling all what? All night. Jesus said, put out a little deeper, go out a little deeper, and, and, and set your net down. Their net broke. Broke. Their net broke till, until they had to call other persons to their aid. Jesus showed up in the midst where they needed food for their belly. 
And he was doing all of this to convince them who he was. Jesus bore witness to the truth. Jesus' parable serves as a powerful tool for conveying profound truths about the kingdom. For instance, the parable of the sower in Matthew chapter 13. The various responses to the gospel passage through this parable, Jesus revealed the nature of spiritual soil and the importance of its receptive heart in understanding the truth. Brethren and friends, understand this parable as I leave this with you. This parable is saying not everyone is going to be responsive, but as long as you are sowing, it's going to fall on different what? Soil. How many of your kids follow you narrowly? Think about it. Huh? And so this there is a imbalance at times. You hear kids say, well, you love that one more than me. It's not really the parents favoring that one more than the other. It's because that one is more obedient than the other one. And you say, why are you always speaking on me? Think about it. Think about why, why, why that you, you have to be speaking to this child more than you understand? Know because there is one child or two child who grasped what you're teaching them, who uphold your principles of the womb. You understand what I'm saying? So understand when you and I uh, preach the gospel, teach it to anyone, it's going to fall on different what soil. But the kingdom of God is here. And understand that the kingdom, um, while you and I are on earth, we are going to face various trials. Jesus, Jesus did not allow these various trials to deter him. Even when they insulted, um, he, he, he went on his way and he, still, he was still doing um, the Lord's work. In Luke chapter 4 he went to his hometown. You know what they said? Who is this carpenter boy coming here to tell us anything? They wanted to shove him off a cliff. You know at times he, they said um, a king don't really have honor in his own what? In his own home. The essence of what I'm saying to you yes we are in a brand new kingdom. Yes we are facing trials. But understand, the trials are for something. It is to make us, not break us. It is to mold us and shape us into God's character, character building, where it's going to move us to a better place, move us to a more mature place, move us to a place where we'll be able to make sensible and correct and informed decisions. Do you understand what I'm saying? I, I can give you multiple examples, but I will not keep you long because we have a pending issue or something to, uh, to discuss that involves the kingdom of God, involves you and I. And so as, as we travel this earthly journey, ask yourself this, that while you are in the kingdom of God, what is your purpose and what? My purpose. Ask yourself this. When God said, cast all your cares on him because he cares, what does this mean? How do we navigate life? The older I become and the, and the experience that I, that I face has taught me about life. But one thing God is teaching me, Christopher Fong, is that I must trust him in every situation. And the way how you trust him depends on your faith in him. Do you have an in informed faith? Do you understand the ramification of the kingdom of God? And how did Jesus Christ travel? Jesus Christ traveled light. He had no physical things attached. But he was a wealthy individual. He was a wealthy individual. But yet he had no physical thing 
attached to him. He didn't have a life savings. He didn't have a, a car. He didn't have a house. He didn't have a, a debt insurance plan. Do not misinterpret me. I'm not saying these things are not important. I'm just telling you how he traveled. He didn't. All of his times were heavenly times. All of them. Heavenly times. And he said, lay up treasures where? In heaven. Huh? Look to whom? God. Huh? In everything he's pointed to heaven. And I hope that a little piece of you and a little piece of me will always have your times and your treasures wrapped up in where? In heaven. Jesus traveled light. And while he was traveling light, he was the most effective person when he traveled. Whoever he encounters, philosophers and doctors and lawyers, tax collectors, he outshone them. He outperformed them, and he outspent them. He outfed them. He outlived them, because at the end is at his right, the right hand of our Majesty, reigning, reigning in the kingdom of God. If you want to experience this kingdom, why don't you come as we stand and sing? Hark the gentle voice of Jesus falleth tenderly upon you.